last array tool we are going to look at is the path array. To use the path array, we have to go to the array pull down and go to path array. First thing it says is to select my objects. I've put a circle here at the end of my arc that is my object. So I'm going to pick that. Once I pick my object, and again, it can be multiple objects, it doesn't have to be just one, I can hit enter. Now it says to select the path curve. And if I pick that, you notice it automatically divided it evenly based on some parameters. Now this one, if you look down here at the bottom, you have lots of different choices. I have associative, I have method, I have base point, I have tangent direction, I have number of items. I can change the number of items that I want on here. So I could go to say 10 and it will space them out equal distance apart. And if I hit enter, then it will tell me rows. Say if I wanted to do multiple rows offset from here, I can do rows and I'm gonna put in five. So you see it did five rows and I hit enter. Ask me for like the dimension between the rows. I can do levels, I can do align items. So I have some other choices. So again, the path array is based upon a pathway and an object being placed on that pathway and it will follow that pathway. We could even do an irregular path by using our spline. So if I picked just some random points here and did a spline and did enter, and let's just go ahead and copy this circle. Again, once it created this, you'll see they're all one object. So to be able to move them independently, I have to explode them. So now I'm going to copy this circle from that endpoint to that endpoint. I'm going to go to my path array. I'm going to pick my object. I'm going to hit enter. And then I'm going to pick my path. And you'll see it followed that exact path. So this can be a very convenient tool if needed to be able to follow some kind of a circular pathway or an irregular shape pathway with objects. That is the last array tool that we have that we're gonna talk about today. So if we go back to your assignment, after you have viewed the videos and read this information, you'll see you have drawing with AutoCAD, drawing the two sprockets. We open that up. Again, if you read the directions, you're gonna create a subfolder in your OneDrive called 05-Arrays. You're gonna open AutoCAD. You're gonna use the template. You're gonna set your units to decimal and use the precision of 0.00. .00. And then you're gonna save this first drawing as the sprocket task one with your initials. You're going to create these layers with the line type and the description. This one, be sure to include your center marks. We learned how to do that when we did the motorcycle gasket. You can use the annotate tool. Now this particular drawing does not show the center marks. You need to show the center marks. So the best way to do this is to draw your two circles to draw this area here and this circle. And then you're gonna use the tangent to attach to the bottom circle to this circle. You'll notice there is a gap here. That gap happens after you fill it these two pieces together. So you're gonna draw the bottom part first. Once you get that drawn and you get it attached here at the tangent, you are gonna use your array, your polar array. This will be your center point, And you're gonna array this around to these other locations. Again, make sure you put your center marks in here first. Center marks on angled pieces should always point to the center of a circle in this particular case. So if you, if you do this and you don't put the center marks in down here, when you do the array for these, your center marks are not gonna be there and you're gonna have a really hard time trying to get them to go exactly where they're supposed to be. Once you have all three of the wings of the sprocket on there, then you're gonna come back in and you're gonna do this fillet at each of these points. And when you do, it's going to pull it away from your circle. That is fine. When you do these, these are going to crisscross. That is fine, that's the way it's supposed to be. So that's the first assignment. The second assignment, you're gonna go through the same steps again, and this time you're going to draw this sprocket. Now this sprocket has a lot of circles. The best way to do this, again, is to start with your center circle, 
and always work your array off of a circle that is either at the top, at the bottom, or completely at the side like these are here. You don't want to try to start here because you don't know what that angle is. You can't start up here on this one because you don't know what that angle is. So you want to start here. Again, as a reminder, put your center points in first thing. You do need to put these center lines in here. When you do your circles, it's going to give you the complete crosshair. That's fine. Don't worry about that. I'm not picky about that as long as you get the center points in there and these center lines. This line that goes out here where the gears are is a hidden line that needs to be on your hidden line layer. It's best to draw this first and place it on this location. Then you will need to count each one of these gears and that is what you're going to use to do your array. When you get done, if you have a huge gap between here and here, then you did something wrong. If they are overlapping, you did something wrong. Again, notice the numbers are diameters, so you're going to be using diameters on everything and make sure you put everything on the proper layers. When you get done, you are to submit your AutoCAD files. Make sure you submit them both at the same time. And here is the rubric for this. So if you have any questions, be sure to let me know. If we go back to the assignment page, you will see that you have some review questions over the polar, rectangular, and path arrays review. So I'll make sure that you get those done. One other thing I want to remind you of, we will be having a quiz coming up and here is the study guide for you. Again, I don't tell you exactly what's going to be on the test, but these are definitely items that you should study. The date of the test is still to be determined. The next part that we will look at is going to be hatch. So we will do hatch in the next class. If you have any questions, be sure to reach out to me. Have a good day.